Hello everybody, my name is Carlton Hudson. I go by the name of Network Prodigy. And what I have for you guys today in this YouTube tutorial is an introduction into MPLS, or what we call multi-protocol label switching. Now this is only gonna serve as an introduction, and in a future tutorial, I'm gonna do a more deep dive and kind of tell you guys how MPLS works behind the scenes. So right now I'm in GNS3, and the problem that we're currently having with this topology is this. Router 1 has a loopback 100 interface. Okay, this is the IP address it has configured. Router 5 also has a loopback 100 interface. This is the IP address that's configured. And right now, they are unable to ping each other using these loopback 100 interfaces. So for example, if I come over to Router 1 and I ping the loopback 100 interface on Router 5, and I source it from my own loopback 100 interface, we see that the pings are failing. Now right now, router one and five, they know about the loopback 100 interfaces because we're running them or advertising them in BGP. So to give you guys a little bit more about the topology, I'm running OSPF on routers one, two, three, four, and five. The loopback zero interface on router one is getting advertised in the OSPF and so is the loopback zero interface on router five. And this is what we're using to establish the BGP pairing session between one and five. And then they're advertising their loopback 100 interfaces into BGP. So if I come over to router one and I do a show IP BGP, I can see that I'm learning about the loopback 100 interface from router five. And if I do a show IP route BGP, I see that it's getting installed into the global rib as a BGP route. But the problem is we cannot ping the loopback on router five. And if we come over to router five, we can do a show IP BGP. And we see that we're learning about the loopback 100 interface from router one. We can do a show IP route BGP. We see that it's getting installed into the global routing table as a BGP route. But if we do our ping source loopback 100, the ping is failing. And this is what MPLS is designed to solve because the problem is in order for router one and router five to reach each other, they have to go through routers two, three, and four. But the problem is two, three, and four are not running BGP. So these loopback 100 interfaces, they don't know about these interfaces because they're not running BGP. So for example, if I come over to router two and I do a show IP route for router one's loopback 100 interface, it's not in the table. And if I do a show IP Ceph for the loopback, this is gonna show me if I'm falling back to a default or not, which I'm not because it says no route. So I have a packet capture going right now between one and two and Wireshark, so I'm gonna come here. I'm just gonna filter ICMP traffic. So we can see we have a bunch of echo requests going out, but we don't have any replies. And that's because when the request gets to two, two is dropping it. And that's because when it comes into router two, two is making his decision based on the destination IP address, which we just saw, two does not know about this destination which is why it's getting dropped. So what MPLS will allow us to do is to tunnel the traffic over the network between one and five and allow the routers to make decisions based on label values and not based upon the final destination in the packet. So for example, when we enable MPLS on all of the routers, they're all going to generate label values for router one's loopback zero and router five's loopback zero. Because when you turn MPLS on, you generate a label for all of your IGP routes. And they're gonna know about these loopbacks because we're running OSPF. So for example, if I come over to router two and I do a show IP route for the loopback zero interface of router one, and that's actually on router one, I need to go to router two if I do a show IP route for router one's loopback zero, it's in the table as an OSPF route. If I do a route lookup on router five's loopback zero, I can see that I know about it via OSPF. So I'm going to generate label values for these two loopbacks. 
and every router is going to do the same thing. Now when we generate these loopbacks, we're then going to use a protocol known as LDP, which LDP stands for Label Distribution Protocol. LDP is what the routers are going to use to exchange the labels. So when router 2 generates these labels, he shares them with router 1. He's also going to share them with 3. So then what happens is this. Router 1 is going to see that the next hop in order to get to router 5's loopback 100 is router 5's loopback 0. 5.5.5.5. He knows that 2 is going to be the next hop in order to get to this next hop of router 5's loopback 0. But the difference is now when router 1 sends the traffic to 2, he's going to insert a label value that 2 sent him. So for example, if 2 generated the label value of 201 for router 5's loopback, 1 should be inserting this label value 201 as it comes to router 2. So then router 2 no longer has to make a decision based on the destination IP he now can make a decision based on the label value. And how it's gonna look, I got a picture that I can show you. It's gonna look something like this. So previously, router two was making his decision based on this, the destination IP. But you will notice that there's an MPLS header that got inserted between the ethernet header, which is layer two, and the IP header, which is layer three. So sometimes we'll refer to the MPLS label as layer two and a half, because it's right between two and three. So two is no longer making his decision based on this. He's now making his decision based on a label value. And this label value is going to be tied to somebody's loop back. So now, if I'm making the decision based on a label, I don't need to know about the destination IP address of the packet because I'm never going to see it. Because once I make my decision on the label, I send it where it needs to go. So if I come back to the capture, we see right now it's just native IPv4 traffic. There's no label. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come to all of my routers and I'm going to enable MPLS. Since I'm running OSPF, it's simple. I can go under the process and I can say MPLS LDP auto config. What this is going to do is any interface you're running OSPF on is going to turn MPLS on on that interface. Okay, so it's just a shortcut. I'm going to do the same thing on every single router. Okay, I'm going to say router OSPF 1. And I'm going to say MPLS LDP auto config. Okay. I'm going to come over to router 3. I'm going to say router, router, if I can spell it right, OSPF1 MPLS LDP auto config. All right. Let's come over to router 4. Let's say router OSPF1 MPLS LDP auto config. And then we're going to come to router 5 and do the same thing. Router OSPF1 MPLS LDP auto config. So now that I have MPLS running, one thing you will notice is that we got log messages saying that we have a new LDP neighbor. Okay, remember LDP is what they're going to use to exchange the labels. So right now, one has an LDP relationship with router two. So if I want to see what label values I'm generating, what I can do is a show MPLS LDP bindings. And looking at router 5's loopback, for example, the local binding, this is the one that I generated. I can see that my local binding is 101. The remote binding, this is what router 2 generated. He generated a label of 200. Now here is the key. If I look into my routing table, if I do a show IP route for router 5's loopback, I'm going to see that the next hop is router 2. And router 2 sent me a label value of 200. Now right now, this is telling you what the neighbor is. 
what he does is it's kind of like the the router ID inside of OSPF but I want to save that because I'm gonna do a deep dive later and I'm gonna explain everything so router 2 is generating the label 200 so this means that when router 1 is trying to send traffic to router 5's loopback and the reason why he's trying to send it to router 5's loopback is because if we do a show IP route for router 5's loopback 100 the next hop is router 5 so he's trying to send traffic to that next hop so if that's the case since router 2 is the next hop to get to router 5's loopback he needs to insert a label value of 200 so I still got my capture running and what we should see is the next ping request that we see they should have label values associated with them so if I come back to router 1 I'm going to do my ping again, but I'm only going to do a repeat of one. I only want to do it once. Well, I'm, I'm, I'll just do a regular. So we see that now the pings are going through. And if I come back to my capture, here is the ping request. And I want you to notice the difference. This was before we configured MPLS. This is after we configured MPLS. Notice that there's now a label value of 200 which means router 2 no longer has to make his decision based on the destination he can now make his decision based on an MPLS label and what happens is if I come over to router 2 and I do a show MPLS forwarding table this is going to show you the database the MPLS database router 2 has built if I look for a label value of 200 which is here I know that this is for router 5's loopback I know that the next hop is going to be router 3 and I know that he's reachable out FA1 slash 0 but the key is the outgoing label is 302 this is because 302 is the label router 3 generated and this is the label that 3 shared with 2 through LDP. So if I come over to router 3 and I do a show MPLS LDP bindings, if you look at router 5's loopback, the local binding is 302 for router 5's loopback. That's why if you come over to router 2, the outgoing label is 302. That's the one router 3 generated. So as it's coming between 1 and 5, all we're doing is taking the incoming label and swapping the label with an outgoing label. So we said what, router 3 was using 302? Yeah, he's using 302. And router 2 was using, what was it, 200. So essentially, router 1 sent the data to router 2 with a label value of 200. 2 is then going to swap this and send it to router 3 with a label of 200 or 302. The end result is that the data is going to get label switched as it gets to router 5. And then as it's coming back, it's going to get label switched and it gets to router 1. And that's how we're able to use MPLS to solve the problem of the routers in the middle not knowing the final destination because they're no longer making decisions based on the final destination they're now making decisions based on a label value and when we go into the deep dive I'm going to talk about more about LDP how the routers generate the labels how they know which labels to use and how do we build this label switch path that's going to allow the routers in the middle to not have to know about the final destination and only make their decisions based on the label